Hi, my friend. How are you, Noor? I'm so good. How are you? Good. Say hi to my dad. I'm so happy. I'm actually here for your dad. I understand. <laughs> so, like, I'm a big, I just, I'm so happy to see your face on here. I'm so happy that you guys are just hanging out and being safe and being so, like, sweet with everyone. This is amazing. Thanks, Where are you from, Nora? I, so we live in Brooklyn, um, but oh, my Brooklyn. family is from Libya. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nora's incredibly Very talented. Yeah. I mm -hmm. actually, I, so I just you? wanted to get on to say thank you to Gary because we are launching our oh, right. series, The Process, tomorrow. So we have, I have an interview series that's coming out and Gary has been so hospitable and kind in letting his team really uh, help us with this project. So you have an awesome son. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank what you. is your biggest lesson that you have taught Gary that you feel like he uses in his everyday life? What is his lesson or my lesson? You, the, a lesson that you taught him. Taught Gary. Well, I guess uh, the credit I should take for it, uh, and I don't take a lot of credit for, I think I, I made him a uh, a man, he is honest when he first came to the business. That was, uh, and I think Gary even in some of his speeches said, said that. What his father said, listen, you make a deal, you shake your hand, you live by it. That's it. It's, uh, you know. And I think that's, that's one of the things you... Let's would... talk more about what I taught you, Dad, because this will take up gonna, the entire okay, hour. That's my second question. I mean, this I'm is going to take up the entire hour of the screen, Dad. Uh, no, but... Uh, and the hard work, I guess it's genetic. Uh, you know, I don't think... I no, I think it's actually a learned behavior. I think learned. hard work is actually fully a learned behavior. I definitely learned that from my mom I and Dad. I don't understand the parents who let uh, kids to get away with shit. Not working. Yeah. Meaning, but at the young age. Yeah. If you if you own a business or you have ability to send your kids to babysit or to do whatever, they should start at the young age. Because I don't know. I had. I, I, listen, I can talk to you for hours. You know, I had a very recent situation where a mom decides the kid should not work on Friday and Saturdays. He should work only two hours on Monday and Wednesday. Uh, the whole thing, to me, I want to throw up. I don't so are you annoyed with our generation and their feeling of entitlement when it comes to not wanting to work? I think the younger generation, that's my personal opinion. Yes. With, not Gary, not anybody else. Definitely. My per we share very few. We share 20% agreement. We share 80% agreement. <laughs> We share 80% agree agreement, 20% in outer space opposite direction. Right, right. right? I mean, uh, yeah, That's, yeah. whatever. Nobody should agree. But, uh, right, you can agree. But uh, I, 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 don't, I don't like the way uh, some family, some families, right, raise the kids. Even how they behave when they go to a supermarket or a store or any place, right, in public, and they run around like maniacs and the parents paying zero attention to it and i get so frustrated with that but i don't I mean, think that's a generational thing i saw that in 1982 and that happened i don't in think 90s. so i don't think so. I, listen it all depends on the family it's all depends on the family it's all depends you would never be able to do something like that do you think, think that's the exact same thing right. though because i've always thought that was cultural. Okay. what's that nord do you think it's cultural though because i've always thought that was it's cultural, cultural. I used to, like, it's definitely the cultural. Store and be like, parents, my mom would never Okay, here we go. Yeah, but even so, cultural, there's, there's like, you know, within cultures, there's very different family. That's vibes. right. My that's dad's right. family, my mom's family were totally different in the same fucking culture. Right? Really? As far as what? Raising kids? Just like every, what I'm saying is culture. There's, it, this is the current American culture right now. You have unbelievable amounts of different of opinions. So it's not just right. like that's immigrants what? or Libyans or Russians or Mexicans, right. you know, like. Sure, it's cultural, and obviously stereotypes and cultures exist for a reason, and they have some overlay. But you know, I, I think I think hard work is a really fascinating thing because I think a lot of it has to do with the circumstance 
of the situation. There's so many people that I meet that are born in America that work their faces off because they were born in a trailer park and they had resentment and they have a chip on their shoulder and they bleed out of their eyeballs. Hard work, I have a question please. for you, Gary. Go ahead. My question for you is with everything that's going on and everyone, I, I realized that today I was like, okay, I've kind of understood that this is our new normal for a little bit and things are going to be different. I just had a virtual brunch with my lawyer and some thought leaders and one of them was Seth Godin and yep. we were talking to him about what, you know, the, um, the climate for the creative industry is going to be after this. Both of us are speakers and we travel a lot. And so he was talking about how you can't, you can't exactly replicate what your in-person experience is with a speaker and the idea of flying someone out, bringing them in, and that speaker kind of almost existing as a trophy of the event, as something to celebrate. But when you have them virtually, it doesn't hold the same uh, weight. weight, I guess. Yes, right. So what do you feel like? How do you feel like this industry is going to evolve after this? And how do we maximize on using this virtual experience as a way to truly build connectivity and make it worth people's time? I, I think that there'll be, you know, I think that that point is well taken. I don't think in-person things will stop. Do I think that some will innovate and decide to do more stuff virtually. Yes, I think all of us are getting more cozy and comfortable through this screen. Um, so I think that like everything else, post something this large, there will be some adjustments. I think the top performers, the people that continue to fill seats will continue to flourish. But I do think the lower middle class of speakers um, will find, will either be cut We'll find opportunities to go virtual. Um, I, there's also the opportunity for virtual. I mean, I also think people are not underestimating technology. Like we're not, I've already given keynotes as a hologram, right, in Vancouver. Yeah, so I mean, I think that we're a decade away from that being quite normal where the person's Wait, giving- an actual hologram? Yeah. Pre-recorded or live? pre-recorded but I but I recorded it with a studio audience so I felt normal and it was my current speech at the time and it went and I I've done that virtually and how what was the feedback it was great except the event did a shitty job and didn't make it clear that I was going to be a hologram and I didn't realize that and some people were upset and so I had to do some damage control and reach out to people and do oh, some wow. times because I felt bad um you know so. Wow. All right, Norm, I'm going to run into some more stuff. Love you. Talk to you soon. Love you. Take Bye. Care. Bye. Evan, thank you so much for having a couple seconds and being able to tell the Believe Nation a little bit about Empathy Wines. It means a lot to me that you would take this valuable real estate and, and time on your channel to give me some love. It means a lot. It's just good karma points and so you're just, you're awesome. Thank you. Believe Nation, uh, if you're into wine at all, go to empathywines.com. My whole career's work was poured into producing a wine that rivaled 40 to $60 wine for 20 bucks a bottle. Uh, I'm just super excited about this subscription-based wine business. You can order three, six, or 12 bottles in subscription form, rosé, white, red. Um, if, you, if you search on Instagram or, or Twitter, you will be blown away. People are literally like, I don't even like Gary Vee, but the wine's good. Super proud of the effort. Thanks, Evan, for the time. Uh, wishing you guys all happy and healthy. If you wanna learn how to market on social media like Gary Vee, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.